Good afternoon or good morning. I should really get a studio, shouldn't I? When we move house next, I'm gonna build a studio. But for now, we're filming in the Sebring. Um, don't, please don't tell anyone who likes electric cars about this video um, because they, they don't wanna know. Uh, right, I've got one, two, three, four things to talk about. Each one could be a video on its own, but it's still the summer holidays. I've still got the kids off school and we've still got no internet. So let's bung them all into one video. Right, firstly, Jaguar I-Pace battery lawsuit, then the VW ID buzz is delayed because it's too fat, then a driver warns against buying electric cars due to range problems and a plunge in value, and finally, how your electric car is financing the Russian side of the Ukraine war whilst we're financing the other side with taxpayer money. So nothing to see here really. Shh, don't tell the electric car people about any of this. I, I, I don't want them to get, get worked up. They get worked up enough in the comments anyway. Um, oh, I haven't mentioned the Fremantle Highway either. Cars are driving off the Fremantle Highway, so I will be eating my hat. Um, we'll do that one another day. Right, the Jaguar I-Pace battery lawsuit. Jaguar Land Rover, they're changing that name because they no longer want to be associated with the reliability problems that the Jaguar Land Rover brand is usually associated with. An insider told me the other day that it's basically, this is, oh, this video has gone sideways and I haven't even started it. The Jaguar Land Rover thing, they're going to be rebranding. So they're not going to be known as Jaguar Land Rover. They're going to branch out. So it's going to be like Range Rover, Defender, Discovery. Uh, and it's basically because of Google AdWords, because if you put in Jaguar Land Rover reliability, you get a load of bad stuff that comes up about them being really unreliable. But allegedly, if you put in Defender or Range Rover reliability, it's actually quite good. So instead of sorting out their reputation, they're just rebranding in line with what Google AdWords says. <laughs> All right, that was that was off the cuff. Jaguar Land Rover North America is facing a class action lawsuit regarding its electric I-Pace due to faulty battery packs. The I-Pace we know has been horrendously unreliable anyway. The I-Pace uses LG Energy Solution batteries. I bet they're made in China. I should have researched that for the bit that comes next. Um, the same manufacturer that produced batteries for the Chevy Volt and Kona, Hyundai Kona Electric. There were several isolated incidents in which these vehicles caught fire, sparking, sparking questions about the battery packs. I bet the writer knew that they wrote that, didn't they? Sparking questions. In November 2020, LG Energy Solution initially denied that its battery cells were the source of the fires, but agreed to cooperate with the manufacturers. Yeah, it's not us, but we'll help you with your investigation. Um, however, nearly a year later, LG Energy Solution agreed to pay General Motors 1.9 billion pounds and Hyundai around 623 million pounds as part of a recall. So there we go, um, electric cars burning themselves to the ground and battery manufacturers basically admitting liability. Next up, the Volkswagen ID Buzz campervan has been delayed due to weight issues. I'm really sorry to those of you who were looking forward to getting your hands on an electric campervan with a 200 mile range. Um, 200 miles is just about enough to get me to the coast from here. So totally useless for people that enjoy camper vanning and like adventure, but there we go. The retractable roof version of the electric ID Buzz. Oh, I did review an ID Buzz as well. The link is here. Um, and it basically involved me shouting, call my feet, you mother, quite a lot, which was my favorite part. A retractable roof version of the electric ID Buzz could exceed the weight limit of a typical European driving license, which may affect its launch elsewhere. According to a report from the German outlet Edison, the ID Buzz California could weigh close to 7,700 pounds if it was released today, which happens to be the limit for the typical European Category B motor vehicle license. If the VW ID Buzz California exceeds 7,700 pounds, most European drivers won't be able to operate it legally without a C1 license that is meant for commercial vehicles like transport trucks. It's not gonna be any good, is it, for a vehicle that is designed for leisure? Um, yeah, so you're gonna need a C1 license to be able to drive your VW ID Buzz California 
to the coast. Not that you'll get there anyway, because the battery will run out before you get there. And when you do get there, the battery will run out whilst you're parked in your field because you're using all of the electric stuff that's in the camper van, because that's what camper vans are all about. Makes absolutely no sense to me, but it gets better. Efforts to raise the category B 7,700 pound maximum weight have been explored since earlier this year by the European Commission, according to the German Automobile Club ADAC. Under the proposed licensing rules, the new maximum would be £9,400, enough to safely put the ID Buzz California on European roads in the hands of ordinary drivers. Let's digest that for a minute. This is the same Volkswagen that decided that the diesel emission stuff wasn't for them, so instead of making their cars uh, engines fall beneath the diesel emission standards, they built in a cheat device so that the engine would know that it was being tested and it could change its emissions accordingly. The Germans quite like to cheat and here they are again. Instead of making an electric camper van that falls beneath the weight bracket of the basic normal person driving license, they want to up the level of the basic normal person driver license. That's kind of hilarious, isn't it? Um, so there we go. The ID Buzz California is too fat and the Germans are responding by making sure that we are all allowed to drive heavier vehicles. Don't give people with driving licenses access to legally drive heavier things. People aren't very good drivers anyway. Don't, that should, <laughs> that should not be upped. It's been set at £7,700, don't know what that is in kilos, for a reason. Um, you can't just randomly up it by like two and a bit thousand pounds. Not on. Um, all right, last one before we get into the China thing. Driver warns against buying electric cars after range problems and a plunge in Vauxhall Mocha values. This is brilliant. This is like a typical story from a British newspaper. A hotel manager has warned of electric car troubles and told drivers to think twice before forking out for an electric vehicle. Let me just say while we're on this one, I could absolutely take my pick of articles like this. They are all over British newspapers at the moment. This one I chose based on one of the comments at the end, though. He bought the car, which is a Vauxhall Mocha, based on the fact that it's got a 209 mile range, but he's been struggling to get even 120 miles out of it. Again, take your pick on stories about electric vehicles not getting the range that has been claimed. All you Tesla people in the comments will be telling me how far you can go on one charge and how you just have to be more organized and how you just have to plan. Well, I was watching a petrol ped video the other day that said he had 10 apps on his phone to charge his electric car at various service stations. That's not where I want to be. I don't want 10 apps on my phone to be able to fill my car up. It's just absolutely shocking. Um, so he bought the car based on 209 ma miles range. He's struggling to get 120 miles. He tried to take it back after 3,000 miles and was told the value had gone from 31 grand to 19 grand, losing 11,000 pounds in 3,000 miles. Very similar to the story that I featured in another one of my videos, um, which was about the Peugeot E208. Same thing, chap buys it, it doesn't do the range that is claimed, he goes and gets it tested, they say the battery's fine, he says I wanna return it, and they say, well, you can return it, but you're gonna lose 18 grand. And again, I think he'd had it like six months or something like that. So this is, you know, this is happening across the board. Right eight minutes in and we're finally into the meat of the video so here's a much more serious one that landed in my inbox this morning hi jeff z of china has greenlit the supply of lethal weapons to russia even though china says that it is neutral china has been doing this for months as reported by the uk government but denied it so how does this affect electric vehicles well China owns over 80% of the world's mineral mines that go into EV batteries. It means that anyone buying an electric vehicle or a Chinese electric vehicle will be directly funding China to support Russia and the illegal invasion slash occupation of Ukraine. This will be a good one to slip into your next video. Take care, Ian. Thanks, Ian. Consider that slipped into this video. So, there's some links there which I'll put in the description. China dominates the global lithium battery market as we know. 
We know that China makes all of the technology. We know that China makes all of the solar panels. We know that China makes all of the wind turbines. Neutral China is supplying Putin's forces with helicopters, drones and raw materials, says the report. So let me get this absolutely straight. The UK has sent £5 billion to Ukraine to fight against Russia. The USA has sent, well, I tried to Google it. Uh, I got 200 billion, but that was then fact checked down to a measly 113 billion pounds. So if you're in the USA, your government has sent around about 113 billion pounds to Ukraine to fight Russia. Let's just put that number in context for a second. 13 billion, if one dollar is one second, that's more than 400 years. It's actually 411.9506 years if each dollar is one second. So the USA spent quite a lot of money uh, giving money to Ukraine to fight Russia. The UK and the USA are currently heavily incentivizing green energy initiatives, which for the most part involve buying stuff that comes from China, like wind turbines and solar panels. So we pay Ukraine via taxpayers' money to fight Russia, then we pay China for their stuff to fight climate change, and then China uses some of that money that we paid them to help fight climate change to arm Russia so that they can fight Ukraine, who we are paying to fight Russia. <laughs> we pay, hang on, we pay the good guys some money so that they can fight the bad guys, whilst we also pay the bad guys some money for their stuff so that they can give that money to the bad guys to fight the good guys that we're paying. <laughs> uh, I like that one. Uh, that, this would be the part I really wanted to conclude this video by like painting my face and putting on a clown nose and putting on a clown wig. You know, like the meme. So maybe I'll post up the meme at the end of this video. Because, um, well, you tell me. You tell me in the comments. We did a whole video about electric cars and we didn't even mention the fact that they're catching fire in the middle of the ocean. There is so much more that can be said about all of this. But, um, yeah. Struggling with the main flow of videos because I've got the kids at home and it's school holidays and I'm trying my very best to just enjoy myself in these few short months that we've got left before the great winter lockdowns of 2023 commence. Give me your thoughts on all of that in the comments. Thanks for watching.